Abandoned Italy by Robert Brinat, published by Jonglis Publishing. And this is a fascinating and fabulous coffee table book, um, a collection of photographs that the author has um, put together of abandoned buildings throughout Italy. And, um, you know, it is a wonderful way to explore a country. There are villas, there are castelli, um, factories, cinemas, theatres that just from almost one day to the next have closed their doors and they have been abandoned. So I was left feeling actually quite sad and I would love to know what Robert Brinat actually felt going through um, all these abandoned buildings. He says, you know, it was away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Um, I guess you want to know the stories of the people who thrived at one point in some of these wonderful, wonderful homes. I mean, why they have been abandoned is a big, big question. And I guess money, um, you know, is behind a lot of them. Uh, I think some of the uh, issues that the Italians have had, you know, there's been sort of fraudulent um, accounting that has uh, caused the demise of some of these buildings. Um, you know, people have actually wanted to invest money, but, you know, some of these big buildings take a lot of money and would take a huge amount of um, funds to bring them back to any sense of life. He specifies at the back of the book that for most of these buildings you would actually need permission um, and I just think you, you can't bowl up because um, a lot of them are in such a state of disrepair that you would risk life and limb um, visiting. Um, he's also kind of kept them off the map because he's kind of given them, you know, Villa C, he's just given them names of the alphabet um, to keep them private and away from prying eyes. But some of them do have their full name. Um, um, there is, for example, um, the structure that housed the filming of Pinocchio. And so some of the um, cinematic features are still there intact. You have chapels that still have their um, statues. There are wonderful frescoes that um, are beginning to peel. And it's that peeling of the paint that makes you realise that these, um, these had authority and uh, life and vivacity that has been taken from them and of course a lot of them um, have plants growing in them, roofs are missing, some have been um, torched and fire has you know raged through the buildings but they're still just teetering uh, there and he captures that vulnerability of these buildings. Um, you know some are up for sale and you wonder with all these guys around with so much money why you wouldn't buy a building because to see some of these amazing buildings restored would be such an achievement uh, personal and and also for the good of you know society because um, there's so much history here in all sorts of things. So you've got factories, there's a porcelain factory that just kind of closed its doors. There's a distillery, um, there are quite a few psychiatric units um, that were in converted buildings. And you can still see the beds with their bedding on, um, which is really quite extraordinary. One or two buildings are, you know, the owner left from one day to the next and they're personal, um, you know, you know, there's, there's a picture of a chest of drawers with things hanging out of it. And so there's obviously a sort of um, appearing into personal lives that feels quite private and it almost feels as though you're appearing on someone else's life. They've just left, um, but obviously there are cobwebs and, um, you know, the roofs aren't in great shape. So it's, it's a really interesting book and particularly for anyone who really, really loves Italy. So I really recommend picking up a copy of Abandoned Italy and it's a particularly good present for anyone who really, really loves architecture and Italy.